<laughs> this guy just fing shit his pants. He literally is just wearing gray sweatpants and he just shit his pants. Boogers can be beautiful. Clear, yellow, sometimes a little red streak. <laughs> he's so fing lucky that he got Kalila because he's so fing disgusting. I think he genuinely thinks he's gonna be able to get somebody at the caliber of Kalila and he's wrong. It's not gonna happen, buddy. <laughs> What's up? My name is Anthony Resonello. I'm a dating coach in Los Angeles, and this is Love Test, where I break down and analyze the relationship between a famous couple. And at the end of every episode, I give every couple a love test score based on what we can learn from their relationship. Today, we're looking at Bobby Lee and Kalila, and let's see how it goes. I'm Kalila. I co-host a podcast with Bobby Lee called Tiger Belly. He is my best friend, and he also used to eat my pussy. Muchos gracias. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start the game. So we're here to play two. <laughs> but this is the amazing thing about their relationship right off the bat. You know that they have the same sense of humor. They have that amazing chemistry and that amazing spark. I'm really interested in seeing why exactly they broke up because I don't watch the podcast. Why the hell did we break up? Many reasons, but ultimately because we nailed the friendship, but we lost the romance. What do yeah. you think? Do you feel the same? You know, see, this is a problem with so many couples where they have that friendship, they have that chemistry, but they lose the spark, they lose the romance. And the problem with that is they think that that just is what happens naturally. They don't realize that doesn't have to happen. If you put in the effort, if you make the commitment to keep the spark alive, it will act. And that's what makes me feel so bad about these two is because somebody fucked up. Somebody got lazy. Somebody stopped caring in the relationship. And that's what caused it. Yeah, I'll just say, can I just say something? I love Arby's. Okay. You know, the roast beef sandwich. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that your vagina looks like Arby's. Is that, is that where you think your mind's going? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's not where I'm going. After 10 years of eating Arby's, yeah. you know what I mean? And she, what, what, what was I like? Korean barbecue? Yeah. Like the and then you're like, one day, you're like, I want Italian. I could have stayed with Korean barbecue. Really? Yeah, but you uh, wanted outside of Arby's. Wow. I wanted to switch it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Kalila wanted to stay with Bobby. Bobby wanted to get out. And I'm going to assume right now that he did that because he was under the impression that the spark just died naturally. And I'm going to also say that he's a celebrity. He lives in Los Angeles. Listen, it's not like he's getting fucking hit up in the DMs a thousand times a day. He probably thought, oh, well, you know, I could just replicate what I had with Kalila. Let me just meet somebody else just like her that I'm also attracted to. And I have a feeling he's gonna be sorely disappointed with that choice. But it's the truth, I think, in many ways. You know, I, mean? I think we cut around all these things about like, you know, we, we weren't intimate or communication and you know what I mean? We should have done this and that. It's at the end of the day, let's get down to the point. You know what I mean? I just wanted to see a different thing, you know? Something's off here, buddy. I think you're, oh, the communication, oh, the intimate. I think you think it's as simple as that, and I think it's a little more complicated than you think. But I love Arby still. It's still my favorite sandwich. Thank you. Next one, is it my turn? What sex advice do you have for me, and how could I improve? Whew. Hit me. I can yeah, yeah, I, I, can I say, you're too professional. You're too professional. In what way? It's just like shit you see in the movies, you know what I mean? Like even just, you know what I mean? Just even the turn around locking eyes, <laughs> you know what I mean? A little, you know what I mean? When you looking up at me, like it's too pro. I want a little, I want a little, like a little, like, you know, a deer, you know what I mean? On the eyes. I want somebody that's <laughs> struggling a bit, you know what I mean? Because even, because I'm not professional. Like I want to be able to be scared and, and fumble around. I think you're too pro. Well, you know, upsides of being a hoe in my day. Yeah. I get shit done. I'm sorry. It's too good. What I'm getting from what they said is that they don't actually like make love. Like I'll bet you they've never made love with each other because when you have sex with a partner, it is one of the most beautiful things that you could ever experience because it's two people that have their walls completely down and they're completely engaged with just each other in the most vulnerable way possible to anybody that hasn't experienced that yet it is fucking a thousand times better than just having like professional porn star sex which is what he's describing kalila does and i'm going to assume that kalila just defaults to that probably because bobby doesn't 
care to get that intimate when he has sex or probably doesn't even realize what that could be for him. Probably also just doesn't give a shit. I think we all are just under the impression that sex should be had the way you see it in porn, not realizing what sex actually fucking is. I think Kalila probably, because I'm just getting her vibe right here, she seems like a very vulnerable, open, loving, caring, supportive person. I have a feeling she puts on this porn star character because she doesn't get that true intimacy and vulnerability from Bobby when they're hooking up, when they're having sex. So she just kind of defaults to what she's always done. The performance just like coming off as like a really good sex haver rather than focusing on the connection between the two people which is the most important thing. And I'm telling you guys, I know that might sound cheesy to some young dudes, but I swear to you, it is a billion times. It makes sex a billion times better. There will never be a time that we no longer speak. That would be the saddest day of my life. I hope not. I don't think so, because I feel like you're family to me at this point. And not even more than family. I think, like, have you ever seen those anglerfish? Anglerfish are like these deep water fish. But eventually, the male, after having sex, fuses himself to the female and becomes like a lifelong appendage. Oh. And I feel as though you are my lifelong appendage. Fuck. I can never let go of you. Wow. We're fused, I think. What about you? No, I mean, it's like getting rid of half of myself or something. Yeah, but you know what I realized is wow. that I'm not gonna marry anybody. Why not? It sounds dreadful to me. I, I, I looked at my parents, I go, how miserable. They're just stuck in this thing, this this contract, and they do the same things every day. No, it's not that, it's not her. It's just that I don't wanna be in a thing. Wow, okay, so there's so much right here. First of all, it's very clear that Kalila still is in love with him, still wishes that this relationship worked out, and it's very clear that Bobby is a little fucked up when it comes to relationships. His idea of what a long lasting relationship is, is distorted to him, is toxic to him. And he said it right there. He bases what a relationship, what marriage looks like based on how his parents were. Bobby, if you're watching this, that's not how your relationships have to be. You can make a relationship whatever way you want to make the relationship. In fact, I ask you, and I know you're not gonna do this. You're probably not even gonna watch this video, but if you really cared, you'll probably think about this in a couple years when you regret the fucking decision of breaking up with Kalila, thinking that you were going to get the same thing somewhere else when you really aren't, you're going to get bored of it. I want you to just write down what you think the ideal marriage looks like outside of any rules, any expectations on that. Think about what the best scenario is for a marriage for you outside of your parents, outside of what you see in movies and TV and society and all that type of shit. What's the best for you? And then I want you to imagine that with Kalila rather than going, look at how everybody is married. Look at how unhappy they are. Look at how shitty my parents' marriage is. If it is boring, not really going anywhere, not really doing anything exciting, having the chemistry, having the intimacy drop instead of grow over the years. Buddy, that doesn't have to be your life. You could choose whatever relationship dynamic that you want to have with somebody that you love. How sexy do you think my naked body is? Be honest. Be honest. The belly is my favorite part. I love your short T-Rex arms. I love that you have uh -huh. weird, like sporadic hair distribution. Everything about you is perfect. I've always been obsessed with your body. <sighs> This is just so sad to see because you could tell that Kalila really still loves him and he loves her too, but I think he thinks that he can't get that spark back, that he can't get that romance back, that exciting feeling, that excited attraction that he probably felt early on in the relationship. But another thing that's so interesting here is it proves that attraction is so fucking subjective and women that are at the caliber, shall we say, of Kalila, they don't give a fuck what people think of who they're dating. Because the truth of the matter is, I'm just gonna say it to you right now, and you're not gonna like hearing this, like 90% of what you think you're attracted to is just what the world has told you to be attracted to. I'm really sorry to say that, but a lot of what you think you're attracted to is really just pressure from society. You could see that because over the years of human existence, what is considered attractive has changed throughout the years in weird ways where you would look at people that were attractive from a hundred years ago and you would be like, why? Kalila is 
genuinely attracted to Bobby. She already knows that she can get anybody that she wants. Everybody knows that she knows she can get anybody that she wants. So she doesn't feel like dating somebody at like that super, super good looking in society standards is going to like elevate her value. She's a hot girl. She already has high value to most of society. So in her brain, she's very clear headed about what she's attracted to. She doesn't have any pressures put onto her for who she should be with. And so if you find you're the type of person that has like super high standards in terms of looks, there's a big likelihood that it's just your insecurity and that you really just want to impress your friends and your family and anybody else in the world to show them how attractive of a person that you can date. In this capitalistic society, even your fucking partner is an asset, is branding for you. And think about how disgusting that is. So what I ask you to do is the next time you are on a date or interacting with somebody or maybe even the person that you're in a relationship with, I want you to strip away all of the pressures and just see if you actually have a true attraction, a true pull to that person while you're talking to them, while you have that strong chemistry with them. I want you to look inside yourself and say, do I feel like this pull to want to hook up with them? You ever get that anxiety around somebody really attractive that you're talking to and you don't know how to be yourself and all that type of stuff. That means you are not attracted to that person because attraction is very specific. It's right in the name attracted. In other words, you are being pulled. You feel complete confidence. You feel like complete chemistry and positivity and fearlessness with the person that you are attracted to. If you feel this anxiety, this tightness in your chest, this pull away from them, that is not attraction. What that is, is you anxious about somebody that you have deemed high value because of society's standards and you go, uh, I don't know if they're going to like me. I need to attain this asset for myself so I could show the world how cool I am to have this thing next to me. That's not attraction. I want you to see attraction as this kind of amorphous blob. You really can't put your finger on what makes you attracted to a person. Yes, there can be like trends in what you find attractive, but often things like how fat somebody is or how tall or short somebody is really doesn't come into play into your attraction because attraction happens like a beautiful mix of many things. People can't really be attracted to qualifications like, oh, how tall this person is. You're not just attracted to height. That doesn't make any sense. The way attraction works, it's a lot more amorphous. It's a lot more about all of these different ingredients coming together to make one truly special, unique person. Just because somebody may be shorter, somebody may be fatter, somebody may be too thin or whatever it is, those are just ingredients to come up with this complete completely unique, beautiful individual. And that's the way you should be seeing attraction. Whenever I ask somebody, has there ever been a time where you were interacting with somebody? This person does not match your like physical standards whatsoever. But for some reason, the way that you guys were interacting was just making it click for you. It was just making certain things that you wouldn't regularly find attractive, super attractive for you. There's a lot of women that I've chatted with that have said, oh, I always wanted tall guys, but you know, I ended up marrying this man that's 5'4", and he's just so fucking confident in the way he owns it is so such a turn on for me that his height was actually the thing that made him attractive to me. That happens so, so often with people, and that is when you're actually attracted to somebody. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, just because you like tall guys, that's not true. No, 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 no. I'm just saying don't look at people as these separate qualifications that they have for you. Rather, I want you to just see them as this beautiful beautiful mixture of things that creates a unique individual that could either be attractive to you based on how you're feeling when you interact with them or not. What did I do to gross you out of the relationship? Go ahead. Okay, let's start with a with a fungus ball. Stop. No, don't say that. Please, can I tell that one? No, 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 no please. Please. No, 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 no fungus balls. Foot shavings. No foot shavings. No foot shavings. That's, please, please. Booger menagerie. That's fine. So he just had an art installation <laughs> of boogers. <laughs> In our, but I really, I'm sorry. I mean, have you ever looked underneath a student's desk at a school? There's a menagerie of boogers. It's beautiful. Boogers can be beautiful. Clear, yellow, sometimes a little red streak. I think you guys are like being very judgy. Was the art installation in your apartment? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Bedroom. 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 Oh, fuck. He's so fucking lucky that he got Kalayan because he's so fucking disgusting. I think he genuinely thinks he's gonna be able to 
get somebody at the caliber of Kalila, and he's wrong. It's not gonna happen, buddy. <laughs> this guy just fucking shit his pants. He literally is just wearing gray sweatpants, and he just shit his pants. You don't know what you had. I'm sure so many people tell you that, and I think you think you know better. You don't know better. You know, the one thing that keeps coming back to me about this relationship is despite the fact that they're not together anymore, their chemistry is fucking off the charts. And in the few times that I have like watched their podcast and watch videos of them, that back and forth that they're able to have is special. And I spent my life trying to figure out how to have that type of chemistry, that type of conversation with people that I really liked. I actually ended up making a course called Conversation Mastery. Get it in the link in the description or scanning this QR code right over here. It teaches you everything that you need to know about having an amazing conversation with somebody. What do you say when you first go up to someone? How do you keep the conversation going? How do you never run out of anything to say? How do you compliment in the right way? How do you express your attraction to that person in a way where they actually like it and it doesn't come off weird and awkward? How do you take it to the next level and go on a first date, the second date, the third date? This course actually costs almost $700, but I'm making it free for you. I found this little loophole that I have. You get it on Skillshare and I'm going to give you a free month trial of Skillshare. Now, here's how it works. I don't want you to be like, ah, uh, he's doing this Skillshare sponsorship. This is not a Skillshare sponsorship. It's just this loophole that I figured out. I put my course on Skillshare. You sign up for a month long free trial with the link in the description or the QR code. As soon as you put in your credit card details, guess what you do? You take those credit card details away. <laughs> you cancel your trial with Skillshare. You still get a free month of Skillshare and you get my entire course or an entire month for free. Listen, I'm not anti-Skillshare. If you want to continue with Skillshare, be my guest. I don't care. I just want you to get this course for free. Link in the description, QR code. That's it. Thank you. Let's move on with the video. What's wrong with me? Yeah, go ahead. Be honest. When I first met you, I thought he is so fucking broken like me that I instantly I just knew we would be <clears throat> friends forever. So all the things that I'm gonna say are wrong with you are wrong with me as well, which is we both come from a very traumatized household. Mm. So we can be very chaotic people. You're the Tasmanian devil. Yeah. Oof. Go ahead. Did you ever see yourself marrying me? Yes. Oh, yes. That's how much marrying you, but also, um. It could have been dreadful. I'm just seeing it in Kalila's face. This is hitting her. Like, this is affecting her. I don't think she really believes this. I think she wants to believe it. I'm seeing her hold back here. In my gut, I was like, I'm going to marry Kalila. Just, I knew it in, are you crying? A little bit. <laughs> Fucking shit. You guys man. are horrible. What kind of show is this? <laughs> I just didn't want to fuck you anymore. That's so fucking true though. I think he's still emotionally a fucking teenage boy. I think he thinks that he knows what sex with her is like, and he doesn't realize that he's probably just doing it wrong. And I'm not talking about performance. In fact, too many people perform too much with sex and it builds barriers. Like I talked about earlier, I have a feeling they fucked like a porn star and a guy that just really didn't know what he was doing. And they didn't focus on making love with each other, which is what two people in a long-term committed relationship do. Ah, I wish I could talk to these two people. I feel in, in a weird way, I kind of want them back together. And, and then in another way, I want Kalila with somebody that actually wants to be with her because I could 100% see the pain on Kalila's face in this whole thing and she hides it. She's good at hiding it. I wish that you had said that when you felt it. Yeah. Because then it would have saved us the last couple of years of trying to figure out why we weren't fucking. If you'd just be like, I, don't, I want new pussy, Kalila, I would have been like, I get that. What I think is going to happen, Bobby's gonna run around fucking whoever he wants for the next few years. And then I think he's gonna go, shit, this is kind of starting to get boring now. I miss Kalila, what do I do? And he's gonna be at this weird stalemate where he doesn't wanna get back with her because he doesn't want to get back into the relationship that he thought was heading towards what looked like how his parents have a relationship. But at the same time, he has such a strong fucking connection and chemistry and just relationship with Kalila. And I'm not sure if he's ever going to understand how to make this work again. And it's about building more intimacy, more vulnerability. And he thinks that's not true, but it is true. You know what he said to me? Yeah. He said after he gets through a hundred girls, then we can get back together. <laughs> Because I feel like a hundred, I'd be like... I'm like predicting every fucking thing that happens in this video. You know, I did it all, dude. Like, you know what I mean? In the air. 
underground. You know. So after all that, you're coming back to Arby's. Yeah. How was this experience? How was playing Truth to Drink? That was super cathartic for me because some of those questions I don't think we've ever really had a wow. chance to face to face. That's so interesting. They don't have deep conversations. That tells me so much. Think about it. They have a fucking podcast where they just chat for hours. Yeah, I know that they're interviewing people a lot of the time, but they're with each other a lot and they don't have these kind of conversations. This tells me that Bobby is treating her wrongly. He is fucking up. And Bobby, I gotta say something. In so many years, when you get back together with her, you are going to feel so fucking shitty for what you put her through right here. And you can see that she really does want to get back with him after all of this. It's so fucking dope. Ugh. I kind of want her to meet somebody new because I don't think she knows what she could get. Kalila talked about her toxic upbringing. She might feel she doesn't deserve somebody that can love her the way she needs to be loved. I love Bobby, I love Kalila, I love their relationship, I love their chemistry, but Bobby's fucking up here and I don't think he deserves to get her back. And with that, I'm gonna give my love test score. Listen, their chemistry is off the charts. They're just amazing for each other. But the way that Bobby acted in the relationship just fucking made it crumble. And so I wanna give it a high score because you could just see that they're so good for each other. I'm gonna give it a nice round seven point two. And that's fucking pathetic for two people that have been together for 10 years and that have a podcast that's super successful, that exhibits how much chemistry they have, like it's so obvious. They should be at a 10. If they were together, it would be a 10. If you were waiting to watch to the end of the video, now you could access my free conversation mastery course on Skillshare. Link in the description, dark code. If you have any suggestions for who I should react to next on Love Test, put it in the comments. If you like the stuff I talked about in today's video, you can subscribe to the channel because I put out videos every week. In fact, I just made an analysis on Matthew Perry right here. Bye.